Let's just uh, take a moment to just pause and come together in prayer as a church. So there's lots of things in our thoughts and on our minds, and so let's just do that. Father God, we just take a few moments in the quiet now to lift our prayers to you. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> Lord God, we uh, think of Lou and Pat at this time, particularly Lou, back in hospital, it's been a long journey over these number of weeks and months, Father God, and so we just pray that you care for him at this time, as uh, we thank you for the wisdom of doctors and nurses and specialists, Lord God, and we just pray that you cover them with your comfort and your healing and your prayers, Lord God. Lord, we think of Kim having surgery this week, Lord, we pray you be with her, uh, we pray that it, there are some good outcomes for her and, and improved health, Lord God. And so we pray a, a blessing on Kim today and for surgery tomorrow. And just, Lord, be, may your hand be upon her particularly, we pray in, in Jesus' name. And may she just know that you are a God who never fails. And so we pray for the specialists and doctors again and just what they need to do, Lord God. The operation she'll have, Father, we pray that it's a good success in, in Jesus' name. Thank you. And all the other things are on our hearts and minds, Lord. We, our neighbours, as they mourn and grieve and work through that, and, and other things, Lord God, we, we thank you that you are close by, that you are a God of comfort and hope, that you present with us a door and say, Come, walk through. I'm with you. I won't let you down. So, Lord, we hang on to you today. You are our hope and our salvation. Draw us together as your people as we reach out beyond these walls in real and tangible ways. In Jesus' name, amen. We're not building a crowd, we're building a church. The crowd is here today and gone tomorrow. Over the last few weeks, I want to thank you for your support as we've been exploring different ideas and around the whole area of community engagement and ministry and food hampers and caravans and a number of things have been bubbling away. So I thank you for your support in that and as we see what it looks like for us in Kabuchi here to reach out and to people in need to offer some food and some help and some care and some love and hope, I, I thank you as we partner together in these things. Um, so in April, we're looking at a, a, a campus here of Morton Bay Community Matters and food hampers and a few things around that. So thank you for that. You can read about it in your monthly newsletter as well. So a few things. Be of prayer of that. Uh, people are excited. People are wanting, wanting to know when something's starting. What are you guys doing? And so it's, it's interesting as, we, as there's a great need that things need to get to the right people. And we need people to help make things happen. Sometimes we might feel a bit inadequate, amen? amen. Overwhelmed, overcommitted, anyone? How's that diary looking? <laughs> but we are his church here in this place. And I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about what God wants to do here, today, and beyond. It's, it's good. God is good. All of us need to at times open the door. Open the door, it might be a bit scary. It might be a bit frightening. We all need to have some courage and to turn that handle and step through that door. And so this morning, it's a door of repentance. As we receive that from God. As we were going one way, but now we've turned and we're going another way, following and serving Him. He will do it. He can do it. He can bring life to dead things. He can bring life to me and life to you and life to our church as we pray and serve and work together hand in hand. A number of you know I was at Mackay Church of Christ for a number of years. And they now have a men's shed. I think recently, I think they're looking at opening two for two days a week, but it's going gangbusters. Really good. And that came 
came about simply by having a conversation with a few people. About this whole men's ministry and men's sheds and it was taking off around Australia. So we had a good old chat about that and what would that look like for Mackay and, and a few other things. So a few little plans were, were put in place and a few little meetings. And so everything takes a long time when you're talking to councils and things like that. And one day I was at my church office just working on something or... And, and this gentleman just appeared in my driveway, as they always do uh, when you're a church pastor. People appear in your driveway or inside your foyer and you go, yes, can I help you? Some look a bit more lost than others, but... And he said, oh, my name is Chris. I said, oh, hi, Chris, I'm Michael, the pastor here, blah, 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 you know. Well, oh, that's nice. Um, he goes, I'm, I'm wanting to do a development across the road. I said, okay, because... Um, that was a swimming pool and a lake when the floods happened. Um, and... We're all up, built up on high ground if you've ever been to the church in Mackay. And he goes, I, I want to build a ski park, a cable ski park. I said, oh, that's great, Chris, fantastic. Cool, and, and I hope we're going to be good neighbours. I said, oh, that's interesting. I said, what are you going to do with all the soil that you're digging out to make the lake? And he said, well, I'm wondering if I could give you some of that. And I said, well, that would be fantastic because you see that low land beside the church? We want to put a men's shed on there. He goes, oh, yeah, I've heard of them. I've seen them around. This is a non-Christian guy. And, and he goes, uh, I said, well, can I have your land? Can I have your field? So, that, that, so he, he came and he dumped his land field and he smoothed it all out and got that all sorted and we minded some of his earth moving equipment from time to time and so we've become good friends. He'd appear uh, from once a, oh, a couple times a year, pop in and say hi and things go very slowly. He said, there's any, any, anything I can do for you, just let me know. I said, okay, Chris. So we were having coffee one day and he said, is there anything you need, anything you want? I said, well, I'd love a, I'd love a share. I, I knew he had a few dollars in the bank. Um, I'd Googled him. Um, I'd love a share. He goes, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. And my ministry concluded there and I was off elsewhere and in Tassie and different things. And he was true to his word. The, men, the original men's shed that sits on that bit of land in Mackay, Chris gave us a shed. Doesn't hurt to ask, I don't think. He gave us the shed and there you go. And now they're reaching men and doing different things. And who knows who God will bring to our door? Who knows who will sit and have a coffee with and see God at work. God can use anyone and everyone and he opened the door for us and I stepped through it. Why not? Can't hurt to ask, I didn't think. A question for us today. Who will you open the door for? Who will I open the door for? Will we just push the door open and scoot on by? Or will we take the time and go, you know, no, you first. There you go, let me help you. No, there's the door, madam, there's the door, sir. Whatever. Let me help you through that door to find life in Jesus' name. Who's preparing the way? Who's going before me and going before you? Today, a door of repentance. It's our last week in the series. You can catch up on Facebook or YouTube. You can watch the other ones that maybe you've missed. Romans 6, chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. It will appear magically. Look at that. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do not be blind to that. Receive his gift of eternal life. In John chapter 9, there's a story of a blind man. John chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. On the screen, I'm following along. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it's day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. 
Having said this, this is Jesus, he spat on the ground and made some mud with his saliva. Isn't that a glorious picture? Jesus making a mud pie with his saliva. And he put that on the man's eyes. Go, he said to him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home singing. Wouldn't that be a miraculous miracle that day? We read that Jesus was just going along his day. He sees a guy who has been blind from birth. He stops, he notices, he sees, he takes the time to connect with this blind man. Because they're about to see a great miracle. The people around about are about to see a miracle of God. He restores his vision. Jesus has a vision for people who have no vision. Do we have a heart for people who have lost their way, who are blind and confused? He sees what needs to be changed. A door of repentance, a door of change is before him. And he turns this man's life around. You've walked in darkness long enough. For Jesus is the light of the world and the hope we need. Jesus saw this man's problem as an opportunity for the glory of God. What problem am I holding on to? What problem are you holding on to? We hold on to it so tightly that at times there's no room for Jesus to step in. But he will not pass us by. Don't be too quick to judge. Don't be too quick to judge people and look for a quick solution. It may take some time to journey with them and find the real solution. They ask him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus says, neither. Not their parents. They want to point the finger at Jesus. They want to point the finger at this man like, like what? What's going on here? Neither this man nor his parents. But I've encountered this man this day so you can see the power of God to change a life. We're all blind from birth unless we are born again. Having Jesus as Lord of our life, we're blind to His grace, blind to His salvation, blind to His word and we're blind to His ways. Sadly in our world, many people love the darkness and they love to live with their blindness, making no room for Jesus and no room for God in their life. And sadly some know different. They know no different. And this is where we come in as followers of Christ. We can show them a difference. We can restore their sight and open their eyes and show them a door of life. In one act, Jesus changed this man's life. From a beggar to a preacher, from a sitter to a doer, from blind to seeing. And Jesus can do the same for me and the same for you. Will you have courage to open that door and take a step through and embrace Him as your Lord and Saviour? The blind man's life took a new direction and that's what repentance is all about. A new direction. Turning and going in a new direction and a new way. naked woman was brought before a crowd caught in bed with a man that wasn't her husband 
caught her committing the act of adultery. It's in the Gospel of John, chapter 8. And we read these words. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger, if you know this story. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, th at this those who heard began to go away, one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No, sir. She said, Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. Let us not condemn people. Don't be the faceless pre people of disapproval. Let's drop our rocks and go. Within a Christian context, we come and we step into different situations and bring life and faith and hope and we see lives transformed as we bring Jesus to those who need him. Jesus takes control of this situation. He shifts their focus by bending down and writing on the ground. Their focus is off this half-naked woman in this terrible state. And so he draws the attention to himself and says, well, none of you have sinned. Be the first to throw us And so they drop their rocks and go home. Repentance has conditions. Repentance takes work. Because to this woman he commands her, go and leave your life of sin. He's not condoning what she did. She knows she's in the wrong. Jesus knows in, in the wrong. The crowd know she was going to be stoned to death because of what she had done. Go and leave your life of sin. You've been given a door of opportunity, a door of repentance, a door of change. Take that step. This door of repentance doesn't stop because I'm around these people. Or I want to do these things. As Christian men and women, we must be consistent. Are you really going to change? Are you really going to live for Christ? Leave your life of sin. Leave your life of sin. Wrong choices, wrong people, wrong actions. But we need to make a change and make right choices. We need to be around right people. We need to have right actions. We might show who's number one in our life on a Sunday morning. But how are we going to live Monday? What about Friday night and Saturday night? We're on the way home in the car. Who are we honouring with our words and our actions? The gospel makes us the victor, not the victim. What does repentance look like for you and for me? The book of Acts, chapter 3, 
Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. That the Holy Spirit of God refresh you this morning. Let God remind you of his love today. Let that bless us and lift us up, whatever we're facing, the struggles and concerns of life, health issues, sickness, pressures at work and pressures at home. Let God lift us up. It's a choice to move. It's a choice to change. It's a choice to go in a new direction, to turn away from the darkness and turn to God. Open the door to a new way of living and a new way of being in Jesus' name. I read this from Craig Rochelle. No matter how you would describe your story right now, there's good news. Your story is not over. It's not too late to change the story you'll tell in the future. It's not too late. Walk through that door. Let us write a new story together as we step out in faith and serve Him faithfully. God bless you. Thank you.